basic backstory is some sort of illness has cropped up and spread like wildfire through the population, turning those uh, who are afflicted into raving psychotic maniacs that just want to attack you until you stop moving. The fundamental gameplay that we that we've been pushing on since the beginning is explicit cooperation. This is a cooperative game where the only way to win is to work together. The simplest way is we surround you with so many zombies that you physically can't survive on your own. Uh, in more detail, there are several layers of game mechanics that directly encourage cooperation. There are several attacks that will completely incapacitate you, and if you don't have a friend around, you're done. Well, the main thing is, the big thing, of course, is the cooperation, right? It's a four-player co-op game. Uh, but replayability is another huge key element of the game. So we have what we call the AI director, which is a set of uh, uh, AI technology that, that monitors what, you eat, what each player is doing uh, and makes sure that the drama of the experience has high points and low points. So you're not constantly being swarmed and you're also not bored either. There's exciting spots and there's spots where you can relax a bit. It also ensures that you can play the same campaign a hundred times and it'll play out differently every time. You gotta stay on your toes. Instead of having a map designer go in and place every single enemy in the map by hand, uh, we have a set of AI algorithms that can place all those enemies uh, procedurally. Right? I say procedurally instead of randomly because random implies it has no rhyme or reason, it's just crapped out there. right? But procedurally, we have several algorithms that are looking at interesting criteria and placing the enemies so you have an exciting game experience, but you never know where they are. So you may have played the game before, but you come to it this time and it's a whole new experience. We do dynamic things with effects, uh, color correction, that sort of thing, uh, based on your state and what the director thinks your state is. And the music is also uh, dynamic and uh, it's unique per player. So I may be hearing some dramatic music going on because I'm getting beaten on and you're hearing quiet, sort of ambient because you're in a different place. We're doing, so we really want you to feel like you're in a horror movie, right? You're playing through a horror movie with your friends. So we're doing a bunch of things uh, with the art style and the art look to reach that goal, as well as doing things like color correction, uh, which is usually, it's a post-processing thing done usually in films that we can able, that we can actually do in real time now in games, where we bring up contrast in certain areas, we, we desaturate certain colors, like in this case we may leave, may leave the reds bright, because we want the blood to really pop, but everything else to get dropped back. Uh, we do film grain, so the actual, instead of looking like a video, it looks more like film with a little bit of grain action going on, which actually helps bring up detail in dark areas, important for our game. Uh, we do vignetting, which basically darkens the border of the screen, uh, which is another sort of filmic look, but it also makes you feel a little claustrophobic. The, the, the major thing with the melee combat, all survivors, uh, your, your, by default, your right mouse click does a push away attack, takes your gun and just whack. Um, and in this game, it's incredibly valuable. It's really useful. Uh, you can knock back whole hordes, and it's just something very satisfying about the zombies coming in, you smack and they all go sailing back, and you take your shotgun to them and end them. It's, it's something we haven't seen in a lot of other games. We've seen other games that have some sort of melee attack, but uh, it, it, ours is a primary function. Yeah, we, we have a lot planned for after we ship the game. I mean, obviously, it's a Valve game. It's on Steam. We've got a great channel to our community. Uh, we've built a bunch of new technology for ease of matchmaking and playing with your friends for this co-op game. And we plan to add a lot of content, continue to add content after we ship. The mode that we're showing today is a pure co-op mode, right? So it's just four survivors working against the AI. That let us really focus in uh, on the co-op gameplay and make that tight. However, we have for years had a uh, player versus player, where you can play the survivors or the infected. We're still retaining that, but we're breaking that into a separate mode where we can really focus on the strengths of that mode and really push that so it's as fun as possible for both sides in that situation. Uh, exactly what shape that PvP mode takes, we're still working out. You can play as the zombies, yes. The game is fundamentally co-op, okay? And it looks at first like this is a game all about shooting zombies, which is great and it's fun and shooting zombies is a blast and all that, right? Really, it's a game about working with your friends. It's a game about trust. A lot of griefers in, in our experience tend to be pretty selfish players, which tends to self-correct in this sort of game. I mean, 
so there's we also give you mechanisms to police this, right? So you have your friends list, first of all, right? If you play with your friends, more or less the problem is solved. Uh, if you're playing with other people, uh, we have voting mechanisms where you can vote people off and get rid of them. And in the game where there's only four of you, it's very clear who's being a jerk, right? It's not some mystery like, he said this and they said this, right? You know, that guy's being a jerk. And then in addition, you know, if you're going to pull a burk and go run off and leave the team, they're going to eat you. Right, so like I said, it kind of self-corrects. All right, Left 4 Dead uh, is shipping November 4th on both the PC and the 360.